Hey guys, OJ Albina here, bringing you guys our BBR Season 3 Week 2 battle against Davion OW or Davion Overwatch. I don't know if I'm supposed to say, like, I'm pretty sure it stands for Overwatch, but I don't know if I'm supposed to say OW or Overwatch. But again, I apologize for butchering probably a very easy name uh, while I'm recording my team builder really late at night, the day before I play. Um, and his Vegas Golden D Knights. It's actually a sick logo. I love Big D Knight, um, and uh, I think it's really cool. Use of the uh, Golden Knights logo. But. Um, from what I hear, he's a very, very nice guy. Uh, my buddy Kurt is, uh, you know, told me he's good buddies with him. He seems like a very cool guy from the few interactions I've had with him. So definitely go check him out in the description below. Um, and yeah, with that being said, let's go ahead and jump onto a quick little team builder. Now I'm going to do a quick little team builder so you can see what we're bringing while we're bringing it, EVs, moves, items, all that good stuff. So you have that background knowledge going into the match. But of course, if you do want to skip ahead to the battle, you can definitely do so. I will have either already left a little, uh, you know, timestamp on the top um, or have put one right now that says like, this is when the battle starts, jump to here. Um, and it'll probably be linked in the description as well. So let's go ahead and definitely jump ahead. But regardless, with that being said, let's go ahead and jump on to match up our team. If you did forget, consists of Celestila, Latias, Cinderace, Crocodile, Lantern, Licky, Licky, Frustle, Driftblim, Garboder, Shinotic, and Throw. While our opponent's team consists of Latios, Corviknight, Rotom Wash, Aselgore, Aromatisse, Kursula, Golbat, Lanoon, Polyrath, Stunfish, and Avalug. Now, um, biggest threats right off the map, Latios can actually be a bit scary. Um, I think just like a Life Orb, uh, like Roosh 3 attack set is very difficult for me to deal with between just like Draco, it's either uh, probably Psy Shock in this matchup, I would say. Draco, Psy Shock, Thunderbolt, Roosh um, is very, very difficult for me to deal with. Um, I've even seen some Surf variants and mocks. Uh, again, big shout out to uh, my front office for helping me you know, prepare for the week. And obviously my boy Box for uh, giving me plenty of mocks and bringing some crazy stuff in the mocks and giving me uh, you know, some great games to get me prepared. So huge shout out to my buddy Box. I really do appreciate him uh, you know, kind of stepping out of retirement and helping me for this week. Uh, I, I, again, I really do appreciate it. But uh, Latios is definitely the biggest threat to my team offensively. Um, other than that, I think we actually have a very phenomenal matchup defensively. I think we check pretty much his entire team with our fat um, incredibly well, and we're still able to break through very well. Um, things like Corviknight, I'm, I'm not scared of bulk up really in the slightest between Celesteela and Lantern uh, and wish support from Licky. I, that should never really be a problem. Rotom Wash should never be a problem, especially with Lantern in the back. Um, we legitimately are wild. The worst it can do is Toxic us or will o -Wisp us or something like that. Um, other than that, we're pretty much free reign to come in on it. And with Wish Support, even if we do get Toxic, we can just kind of keep it healthy. And we also do have uh, Latias in the back as well. So that's obviously really, really great. Um, and again, everything else, we just have great checks for. A Selgor, we have things like Celesteela, Aromatis, again, Celesteela. You're gonna kind of uh, realize that that's, that's a little bit of a theme on this team is that Selly walls half the team and that's gonna kind of be the direction we go forward in this uh, team process. The only scary thing is that if Selly does get chipped, a lend game Lanoon can be very scary for us. So we're gonna have to keep in mind that we do have to keep Selly healthy if we see that Lanoon or we at least have to position ourselves in a way that Lanoon can't come in belly drum and then sweep us. So we either need to have Selly healthy or never put ourselves in a position where Lanoon can actually get that belly drum off. Uh, which means I believe we need to kill it from around 78-ish percent after if it goes have the uh, the eye pop buried in the gluttony, um, we have to be able to kill it from that range uh, or a little bit less if like rocks and things are up. But let's go ahead and jump right into our first mod, which is on your screen right now. It's going to be Big Celesteela. Rock out with the leftovers. Beast Boost as its ability, obviously. Heavy Sun, Lead Seed, Protect, and Flamethrower. In these guys, we got 244 HP, 8 attack, 4 special attack, and max special defense with a sassy nature now i know i guess if you know me you know i hate going max max i hate going like max bulk and then max uh you know uh, like max hp max bulk max hp max attack max speed uh max attack something like that i i really don't like it it just bugs me for some reason but i felt like it was necessary for this week um really there are no physical threats that honestly threaten me minus you know a plus six lagoon but we chew that hit regardless from a good healthy amount um but i really want that special defense to take on things like the aromatis uh to take on things like the aselgore and especially to take on things like big ladios um like i said this is the biggest threat to our team and with leftovers plus protect and stuff like that we shouldn't be too ako by life or thunderbolt which is obviously great heavy slime is going to be doing an absolute ton uh we two hit ko fizz def corvi with just the four uh, special attack provided I mean, uh, Spadef Corvi, provided we have a lead seed up on it, which again, 
is absolutely amazing. <laughs> it's ridiculous how fat Corvi is, but we should always be able to beat a 1v1. I couldn't go Fire Blast because obviously that thing can just kind of pressure stall me, which is a little bit annoying. But between Leech Seed and Flamethrowers and stuff like that, it should never really be able to recover any damage on me. Um, and we should be in a pretty good spot to take it on that way. So Selly is an absolute beast this matchup and just being an overall general nuisance and uh, being almost unkillable for my opponent, uh, minus things like Rotom, which uh, again, they have great, great checks for. Next up, we have our Latias rocking out with the Haban Berry. Once again, two weeks in a row rocking out with Haban Berry Latias. Dragon Pulse, Thunderbolt, Roost, and Combine. EVs wise, we get 12 HP, 4 defense, 228 special attack, 12 speed def, and max speed with a timid nature. Now, this Latias is honestly uh, probably our best, just uh, like, you know, kind of set up win con. I think it does phenomenally in this game. Now, my opponent doesn't have a dark type, uh, much less my opponent last week, but I couldn't really come up with a set that really took advantage of that. So I figured just having Dragon Pulse plus Thunderbolt, uh, you know, coverage is phenomenal. We don't take on Aromatisse very well, but Aromatisse isn't very good versus us, in my personal opinion. I would be very surprised to see it come. And, uh, you know, we have things like Celesteela. We have things like Licky that switch into it very easily. We have things like Garbodor on the bench that would, you know, very well so take it off. We have things like Cinderace that really take advantage of Romatis being, um, you know, uh, pretty passive and stuff like that. So I'm not super expecting it. Um, as for Eevees, we are not too KO'd by Brave Bird from a non-invested Corviknight, which is awesome, which means we can set up on that thing like 100% of the time, which is great. We are not too it KO um, after rocks by Aromatisse Moon Blast, I believe at plus one Spadef, um, you know, after a Calm Mind. So again, if it's not even a boosting on Aromatisse, we might be able to set up to plus six on it if it doesn't have like status or something like that to stop us. We live a Life Orb Latios Draco Meteor after Stealth Rocks with our Haban Berry, which is again, just lets us serve as a really, really nice lure. Um, and then we have max speed to tie a potential Latias. If I can win the tie and he's not Scarf, uh, that's even better for me. And then we have the rest of the special attack just for damage output. So we can throw a big plus one Thunderbolts on the Corviknight and things like that. <laughs> um, and we didn't really need too much bulk outside of this because uh, my opponent's team does uh, kind of tend to lean a little bit more on the passive side once you get past Latios. So I didn't think I really needed a ton of bulk um, overall in this matchup. Next up, we have our Cinderace rocking out with the choice band. Blaze is its ability. Powerball, U turn, Sucker Punch, and Flare Blitz. Max attack, 68 defense, and 188 speed with a jolly nature. Now, I know this looks a little bit weird when we're playing like double water, you know, like Ladio, stuff like that, but if you really think about it, if you really think about it, my opponent does not appreciate switching into banded fire moves, especially when resist, um, the most likely resist being things like Ladios and Rotom. I click U-turn once, obviously Latios does not want to take a banded U-turn in the slightest, and uh, Rotom definitely doesn't want to take it. It really does end up chunking Rotom to where uh, it's really only a one, maybe two time pivot if it's like max fizz def, and then after that, we just click Pyro Ball and we pick up a KO. Especially with Blaze, if we do get a little bit chipped down, it's very difficult for my opponent to deal with, um, to where the fire moves, in my opinion, are so spammable alongside U-turn, I didn't really need any other coverage. I have Sucker Punch for priority in case it's Agility, Latios, Scarf, Latios, and I need to pick it off that way in like a one-on-one -on -one situation. And then I have Flare Blitz just because one, Powerball can miss, and two, it has a little bit lower of, uh, you know, a PP amount. So if something like Corviknight is able to, you know, uh, uh, you know, somehow stall us out of our last couple of Powerballs or put us in a position where we're going to run out of them soon, um, we have Flare Blitz as a backup option. I don't think I really need any other coverage on this thing. This thing is another one that really takes advantage of things like a Robotis, uh, really takes advantage of things like a Selgor. Um, and things like that. And I think it's actually really, really solid as a breaker in this matchup. Uh, and, you know, can really put my opponent on the back foot if we do position it correctly. Next up, we have our Lantern rocking out with the Assault Vest, Thunderbolt, uh, I mean, uh, Volt Absorb is its ability, Thunderbolt, Ice Beam, Scald, and Volt Switch. EVs wise, we got 8 HP, 228 special attack, 164 speed and 108 speed with a modest nature. Now, this Pokemon is a phenomenal bulky pivot this game, especially in the likes of Rotom, Acelgore. Um, Aromatis, you know, things like that. Uh, Kershaw, we can always, you know, pivot it on, Volt switch out, see what it wants to click. Um, and it's a phenomenal, phenomenal pivot into Corviknight. It's going to be my main way of really annoying that thing. Now, um, EVs wise, uh, we are very, very heavily Spadef invested. Um, just because I don't think I really need any physical bulk. Uh, again, there are really any physical threats that I'm too afraid of on this team that really threaten things like Lantern. It's mainly going to be those two flying types plus like maybe a Polyrath or something like that. So again, not super, super worried there. Um, speed wise, we wanted to outspeed a Corviknight, so we're pretty aggressive with our creeps. Um, I believe we're creeping Corviknight. We're creeping Corviknight, uh, creeping no speed Garboder by a little bit. And
and I want to be make sure that I'm faster than a little bit of an aggressive Corv Knight because I don't want that thing roosting all over me because it viably can. Um, it really can if it's faster than me and I won't be able to break through. We have enough special attack investment to always to it KO Spidef Corvy, which I think is really nice. Um, after rocks, of course. Then we have the 8 HP for our odd number of HP, so we can switch on rocks as many times as possible. And then we have the rest in Spadef, just to sponge those special hits from things like Latios, from things like a Selgor, um, Aromatis, you know, annoying mods like that, and just, you know, be a great overall, pretty strong pivot. I actually almost brought um, a really dumb set. I almost brought Agility, Life Orb, uh, Lantern as my win con, because again, I think it does phenomenal in this game, just offensively. Uh, but I held off because I felt AV had a little bit better utility, and I wanted a better switch into Rotom, and, uh, you know, Lantern gives me that. Next up, we got Big Licky making his debut, rocking out with the leftovers. Oblivious is its ability. Uh, Body Slam, Wish, Protect, and Sword Dance. EVs wise, we got 204 HP, 164 defense, and 140 speed death with a. Is it calm or careful? I'm so dumb. I always forget those two. It is careful. Careful is my special attack. Nature. Now, EVs wise, uh, we live a plus six E speed from the uh, Lanoon, which is pretty crazy. And then we threw the Russian speed death. This Pokemon. Uh, is a phenomenal glue piece to speak. Uh, really passing wishes to things like Selly very well, passing wishes to things like Latias very well, passing wishes to things like uh, Lantern especially very, very well. And Sword Dance is actually incredibly obnoxious for my opponent to deal with. I know we're walled by Kursala and I know we're kind of walled by Corv Knight as well. Kursala is a bit of an issue. Um, half of me doesn't expect it to come because I do have great counterplay to it. But if it does come, I think I have other ways of dealing with it. And honestly, if I didn't have any kind of status condition on uh, the Kursala, like I beat a burn with a Lantern and get a Scald burn, I do beat it 1v1. I, I definitely beat it 1v1, which is honestly phenomenal. Uh, I do PP star that thing pretty easily. And I just infinitely wish pass on it. And between this thing and Lantern, I should honestly be fine versus it. Um, and then Corviknight. If Corviknight's not bulk up itself, I can get up to plus six with Swords Dance, get a para, and 1v1 that thing. <laughs> it's actually pretty nuts how bulky and annoying Spadeflicky is because I set up on literally everything. There's not a Pokemon on this team besides like an offensive Polyrath that can actually Oko Licky. And I think that's actually amazing. I think it does phenomenally in this matchup. And if I can position myself correctly um, and there's no Curse Law, this is honestly a viable win con itself, as well as being a great glue and centerpiece to our team. I contemplate going Heal Bell over Sword Stance uh, just for the annoying, you know, Toxics and Burns and things that potentially could come my way. But overall, I feel as if that Licky is just going to be my best overall. Um, it, 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 Swords Dance is going to be my best overall option for Licky because it can win on its own and still provide that, provide that great support. And I'm not super worried about Hazard, provided I still am able to, uh, you know, patch wishes and things like that. And then lastly, we have our final member of the team, which is going to be Crook O'Dial, rocking out the leftovers, Intimidate as its ability, knock off Earthquake, Stealth Rock, and Roar. EVs wise, we got 132 HP, 204 attack, and 172 speed with a jolly nature. Now, this Pokemon, it obviously gives us a phenomenal Stealth Rocker. It gives us a Psychic Immunity for Latios, which makes Scarf Lati a little bit more um, tougher, uh, easier for us to deal with and tougher for my opponent to use. Uh, Knock plus Earthquake is very annoying for my opponent to deal with. We have Roar not only to rack status up on, uh, you know, things like Golbat and Aromatisse and, you know, a bunch of ones that want to potentially switch in on us, uh, things like Corviknight and things like that, um, but also because uh, of the Lanoon. Now, I was running a little bit of calc and I was really contemplating between going Taunt or Roar, because I think Taunt is better overall for things like Corviknight mostly, um, to stop them from roosting, stopping Stunfish from sending rocks, because again, we don't have any removal on this team, and rocks can be really annoying for Cinderace, so uh, I don't want to deal with that particularly, but I would also rather just not lose to Lanoon, and if it's a fat Lanoon, I actually don't guarantee kill it after rocks with our investment. Um, I actually don't even guarantee kill it after two rocks, which is with our investment. Um, so I wanted to have the option to roar so that thing cannot set up in my face for free. Because again, I can just lose the Lunoon if my um, Selly is weakened. So I want to make sure that I'm not put in that position. And, uh, you know, I'm able to, uh, you know, stop that thing from really, really being a nuisance. And again, roar can come up clutch in some specific scenarios. You never know, especially if it's like a really bulky setup called my Lottie. Um, I would you know, really much so prefer roaring that thing out, especially if it's like, you know, I don't, I don't think Calm Mind can come though, because I don't think it can ever break through Shelly, unless it's like a Calm Mind, like sub stored powers. I don't know. But even then, I guess, uh, I guess Crook would be a great option for that thing. So yeah, that's going to be the team. Um, and let's jump right into the battle.
All right, guys, here we are with the battle. We are connected. Let's go ahead and jump right in. I don't know if he's going to be doing an intro. Have fun. Um, and yeah, let's see what he brought. Ooh, hoo, hoo. Okay, so there's no Lanoon. That's amazing. I'm not super worried now. Okay, so as for the things that he ended up bringing, we have Corvi, Lottie, Rotom, Aroma, Avalug, and Polyrath. Um, so I think my lead 100% of the time is going to be Lantern. I don't see great counterplay to a Lantern lead. Um, I can Volt out pretty much for free on literally everything on my opponent's team. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much for free on everything on my opponent's team. Um, and we'll be in a good spot from there, honestly, so... Good luck, have fun to uh, Davion, and hopefully we can have a good one. Uh, but he's definitely thinking. I think. Wow, look at those. Uh, look at the diversity in items. It just looks like all, I, I know there's only three leftovers and one AV, but like I don't know. The team's very fat. It's not something I'm used to. Not something I'm used to. But, um, let's go ahead and uh, jump right in. Once he you know, elects to jump, there we go. There we go. There we go. I'm very nervous. I'm very, very, very nervous. But hopefully we can keep our season going on the right foot. We had a great week one. I'm hoping we have a great week two. Uh, but we'll have to play correctly and make sure we're smart about um, how things are going. But yeah. CMC, which is going to be Big Ladios. Which is a little bit scary. And part of me doesn't even want to take the chip. I'll be honest, part of me doesn't even want to take the chip. Though I feel as if I can vault pretty freely. I'm just going to vault. It covers like a weird call mine play. Draco's going to drop. Oh shit, is this specs? I didn't think you'd raw Draco turn one too when I have the Sully. That's super specs. Either that or Life Orb, one of the two. So this means we have a pretty free Celesteela. That's super specs. Yeah, I'm gonna go free Celly. Ah, I need to find a way to recover my health on my uh, my Rotom a little. I mean my uh, Lantern a little bit. And this should bait in Rotom. So we're gonna leech. Again, this Pokemon is. Damn near impossible for my opponent to break uh, outside of Rotom. And again, we have such a great Rotom uh, check in our Lantern. So maybe I shouldn't have let it get chipped. Hmm. Now, part of me just wants to protect, uh, protect, call a double. I'll protect here. It gives me a little bit more chip. And nothing he can double into punishes my Celesteela. So we're going to protect. If he talks it right here, so be it. Yeah. So I figured that was what was going to happen. Um, so these lefties, it's good to know. Now, he can make the double toxic play. But I'm fine with that. Yeah, I, I don't want to let my silly get bolted on. I just feel like it's not a good idea. Um, let me go hard into our uh, our lantern. Go from there. I want the I want the Volt Absorb plus Leech Seed, and I feel like a, a Thunderbolt or Volt Switch is coming out here. I really do feel like that's coming out here. So, ah, uh, again, we'll see what we can do. So he's gonna withdraw. Back on to Latios. Okay, so he's gonna go hard into Lottie. So good double on my opponent's part. And, and I just, I don't feel like the Draco comes out here again. Because again, that's just such a free, free Selly. I feel like a Thunderbolt comes out, I'm going to make the mid ground into Licky. I just don't feel like that comes out here. Mystical Fire, that's fine too. Hmm. 
So I'm going to wish this may be my opportunity to wish up um, my uh, my lantern because a hardcore if he makes a lot of sense right here. Hardcore V makes a lot of sense right here. Yeah, so out comes Corvy. Now I need to make sure Lantern from how healthy am I? To a Corvy. Six six HP. Level 50, 252, body press. He has to be like max fist def. And I don't think it's worth risking that. Um, so what I think I'm going to do is I think I'm actually going to go hard into my Cinderace because it covers that body press play. So we're going to go hard Cinder. Just a nice middle ground. So 155 down to 95. So that's 60 points of damage. That means he has like max defense. I'm just going to U-turn this turn. Try and get some momentum going. Uh, swing this game a little bit back into my favor. Hulk Smash is going to come out. That is going to be Big Poly Wrath. Uh, which is actually a pretty good check. Um... So his helmet. Okay. Um, U turn did about max defense damage. So will my lantern be faster? I feel as if my lantern will be faster. So we're going to go hard lantern. Uh, we're gonna vault. If he stays in, then I'm very surprised. But if not, I get a free vault switch. Again, I'm, I'm very, very fast on my lantern. I have a lot of speed, and that looked to be like max defense. Like max defense. It should do, yeah, that's, that's right around max defense damage. And I have a lot of speed, so he is gonna stay in. Um, so this makes my Cinderace endgame a lot better, actually. So, uh, gonna go hard in to Eon. Chain punch, it's fine. Now, I really, 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 really want to make the pivot and a Selly. I don't, but I guess it's... Mm. Mm. I guess it is pretty risk free to go for a Thunderbolt. Like, I, I really want to make that double. I should have made the double. I should have made the fucking double. Owen, oh, stop playing like a pussy. Masquerade. It's going to be this thing. Whatever. Not super worried. And then from here, what we just. Just pivot hard Selly, right? If this thing is the weird trick room set, so be it. To a aroma tease. We'll be even faster even though we're minus speed. I'm pretty sure we will be. Trick room. Okay. Um Fifty two modest thunderbolt does not really do that much to us, so I'm just gonna heavy slam. Again, the rotom can come out if it really wants to, but again, I'm not super worried about that. I'll just flamethrower this thing. Or he's gonna come in, take a little bit of chip. 
a flamethrower here. Yeah, we'll flamethrower. Aka. That's fine. That's actually good to know. Um, and because of the trick room, we're actually going to be faster, which is awesome. So my, he's like max defense, right? And trick room's still up, right? Yeah, so I'm just going to flamethrower again. He's like max defense. He's bulk up. And I'm not super worried, so I'm just going to flamethrower again. I'm going to leech here. As he likely roosts again, trying to stall out the trick room. And again, with Leech plus Flamethrower, we should always beat this thing 1v1. Again, I thought he was Max Vista. I'm gonna fucking miss my Leech Seed. You've got to be kidding me. You've got to be kidding me. That's actually super big. I'm not a fan of that. That really tilts me. That super, super tilts me. Okay. I'm gonna Leech again. That super fucking tilts me. Whatever. Whatever. It's all good. It's all good. It's all good. It's all good. Fine, we're fine. <sighs> okay. So we're gonna hit this leech seed. And especially because he's not lefties, we should beat this thing 1v1. So, we're going to flamethrower. This thing is plus three. And again, I can wish this up later. So, like, if I have to take a plus three body press, so be it. Um... I'm not calculating that right. Okay. And yeah, this won't even two at Chaos unless he's like max fizz def. And after lefties, I don't think it'll two at Chaos anyways. Um, so he's just going to withdraw. Again, we get out of that scot free. He goes out into Latios. That's fine. Free chip. Then we know this thing specs, so I'm going to protect. Cell steal the un the in the unbreakable wall. Ah, uh, this thing's just really, really proving to be a nuisance. Okay, let me see. Ladios plus one, level fifty. Mystical fire to our crocodile. Level 50. Hmm. I feel like we can just go hard, Licky. Not really care too much. Just go for a mystical fire again. We wish here for sure. Try and stay as healthy as humanly possible. Because this is a phenomenal win con in itself. Like a phenomenal win con in itself. So we're going to wish... We're gonna do our darndest to keep ourselves as healthy as humanly possible. And how comes this? Now, do I want to make the aggressive lantern play? I think I really do. We can still wish up on a lot. And I feel like the 
being that we made the, the safe pivot last time, I feel like he's going to be a little bit more skeptical about making that play this time. My dad's calling me. I apologize. I'm looking at my phone. My phone. My phone. Recording. Awesome. So, uh, we're going to make the hard lantern play. If he elects to just not wish this thing up, I mean, roost this thing up, not that big of a deal. And this is mainly here to check this annoying uh, nuisance. Roost. Yeah. So, we're going to get healthy again. We're going to get healthy again. Uh, right back up to full we go. Which, again is awesome and we will volt switch. Um emergency. So out comes Lottie. This is fine, this is fine. We're gonna volt again this is like unrecoverable chip on this thing. And I'm just going to make the Cinderace play because we know this is Specs and I get a free U-turn off. It will kill this Latios. And it gives me great momentum. Yeah, it'll kill this Latios. We do so much damage. So much damage. So it's going to be withdrawal. We're going to keep up momentum. I would love rocks at some point, <laughs> but we have not been able to get them up. Not too big of a deal, but it's all good. We just go right back into Lantern and we Volt Switch again. And once this thing goes down, it's, uh, it's looking like a very solid Cinderace endgame. So right back out into Lantern. And there are not any rocks on our side of the field at this point. So that's great. We're going to go and we're going to Volt Switch. A little bit of Volt Turn action, baby. A little bit of Volt Turn. Big Lantern getting back up to full is like... So nice for us too, especially because it was a little bit of a dolt and let that thing take a little bit too much uh, unnecessary chip in the beginning. Uh, we really had to position ourselves correctly to get it back healthy. Uh, but this is definitely going to be a long game. So we're going to Volt Switch. This is going to be our first KO of the game. We are going to be able to knock out big, um, what do you call it? Polyrath, which is great. Absolutely phenomenal. I'm going to go Cinderace because it gives me free U-turn momentum on, like, literally everything. Uh, it forces the Rotom come in, and it forces Chip on that. Which is, again, absolutely amazing. Which is going to be Rotom Wash. We know it's leftovers, so we know we will outspeed. Uh, Rotom Wash. I just want to look at the calc while I can. We're going to U-turn because, actually, we're running kind of low on time. So we're going to U-turn. That thing looks to be like max physically defensive. Which is definitely scary. I feel as if I can afford to go into my lantern. Even if he makes the play of Toxicking. Whatever. You know? Not too big of a deal. Um, fine. That's fine. Lefty's just going to pop. We get a slow volt, volt switch out. I know I'm slower than this thing. I'm slower than no speed Rotom, for sure. Um, by design, because, again, I wanted that slow volt switch. It can toxic if it wants. Okay, it's toxic protect. So, hydro, toxic, protect, volt. It'll be something like that. Again, not too big of a deal. I'm not super worried. Tox is going to pop. It is going to hit. Um, so heal ball support would have been great on this team. But again, we just don't really have it at this point. Um, and I don't think he's toxic tech pain split. So like this is um, pretty much unrecoverable damage. As I think we just go Cinderace here. We U-turn right back into the Lantern. And we're in a phenomenal spot. So again... Uh, this Voltaire momentum is really, really putting us in a solid position. Our opponent can protect. And it will probably put that... They're probably out of range of a... 
what do you call it right now, to be completely honest. But again, I don't think that's too big of a deal. Protect's going to pop. That's completely fair. Um, but we're just going to continuously click U-turn. We are abandoned, so we're locked into this. So you can't even predict, like, you know, a crazy pivot or something like that. But not too big of a deal. Like I said. So this U-turn will put them in range of a Volt Switch, even if they do protect. So, again, I'm not, I'm not too worried at this point. Not super worried. So, it's going to be Hydro, Toxic, Tech, either Thunderbolt or Volt Switch. It's definitely a fair set, too. It's actually really annoying. Um, but I think that we're able to pivot around it correctly. Uh, we should be fine. But also just not want to let this thing take chip, which, again, would be completely fair. But does my, does my opponent have any rocks? Yeah, they don't want to let it take chip. My opponent does not even have rocks. Lock work, B... Uh, what do you call it? Corvi is going to come out. Now I think I want to go right into my lantern. Uh, and this turn I may just throw off said Thunderbolt. Because it's a lot to Corvi. <laughs> Um, and if he wants to get cheeky and try and roost on me, it should put him in range of a Volt Switch the next turn. Again, Thunderbolt isn't easily pivoted in on my opponent's team. Latios comes in, it's taking unrecoverable chip. So that's that's amazing for us. Absolutely amazing for us. So I'm going to Thunderbolt. He may get a little bit impatient and want to click. Um, yeah, so he's going to let me just Thunderbolt this thing. It's not going to be enough to take it out. It's probably going to roost. Yeah, and... Based on that damage, I think that a Volt Switch will take it out from here. Yeah, for sure. We take one turn of Toxic, but I'm not super worried about that. Now we're going to Volt. It should be in range. Should be in range. Um, and with this thing gone, if that thing ever, if that thing ever does go down, uh, we're in a great position. With Licky. So what I think I do here is I think I go into Licky and I protect. Yeah, I protect and see what my opponent wants to lock. Because we'll get a turn of lefties, um, two turns of lefties, which is honestly really going to be paramount in keeping this thing healthy because we haven't been able to wish it up yet. Which again, I think is very, very important. Going to... Protect. See what this thing wants to lock into. If it locks into Draco, we just go hard into our Celesteela. If it locks into Mystical Fire, we just stay in. Draco Meteor is going to pop. So I believe that's three Draco Meteors used as well. Uh, actually, I want to see something. Licky. Latios. Wrench Killer. Level 50. Plus one. Once it needs a max roll. I want to wish. I'm going to cover the double. I'm going to cover the double into Rotom. Yep. I'm going to cover the double. Let's go. So, we're going to be able to wish into our lantern pretty freely, um, which is awesome. Again, we're very super death licky. So, like, I understand that double. That, that play 100% makes sense for my opponent. Like, it 100% makes sense. But I don't have a reason to really, like, be worried about that kind of play, you know? Um, so we're going to wish right into our bathwater. Even if he makes that double, we'll still be in an okay spot. Because we are so healthy. So. Awesome. As uh, I'm trying to click a little bit faster as well, because I noticed my time was a little bit lower than his, and I don't want to lose via timer. That actually really scares me. Uh, sorry, I'm looking at my phone again. Yes, and good. Toxic, not today. So it's going to get a little bit of turn, uh, another turn of, two turns of lefties, um, which is annoying because this thing will be able to protect in my face, uh, but it's fine. Like, it's going to be able to protect, and then I vote, and I take two turns of Toxic, but again, I can 
wish pass into my Rotom pretty freely. I mean, into my Lantern pretty freely. So, does that make sense? But again, we just make this play forever and ever and ever. And with this thing wished up, I don't really have to worry about it being um, worn by, down by Toxic too much. Um, as long as they don't get a double protect here, and I think that would kind of be a bad play. It should be fine. So. I see a pump. That's fine. This is going to do negligible damage. Bolt switch is going to pop. We're going to do a decent chunk right here. We're going to go right into our Cinderace. And again, this is just kind of the series of plays I have to make to play around this thing as safely as humanly possible. So, that's what we're going to do. Um, Protect should pop here. If it doesn't, so be it. That's uh, actually great for us. So, lots and lots and lots and lots of momentum. Lots of momentum. As much of it as humanly possible, actually. So, yeah. Go ahead and click U-turn. Protect's gonna pop here, but again, my opponent's just wasting a lot of time as well. Um, deciding whether or not to go for a protect, deciding whether or not to switch, um, whereas I'm trying to click as fast as humanly possible. Because <laughs> I'm a little bit nervous about time. Because uh, this is a very long game. Just the nature of having two really bulky teams. So, I'm gonna U-turn. Our time is better than our opponent's at this point. We're gonna U-turn. Now this thing, even with Protects, is not going to be doing enough to us. Part of me really wants to go Latias, but I don't want to let it get toxic. I feel like it's a bad play. I feel like that's a bad play. I'm just going to pop. It's fine, because again, I really only need this for this Pokemon. And two turns of Toxic will not be enough to knock us out. So that's great. And now my opponent's fire resists are pretty much non-existent. The double water is gone, um, or at least in range. And I believe Latios is in range soon, too. It definitely can't switch in on me. So that's great. Uh, the Protect can happen. That's fine. I understand why he's making that play. But it doesn't change mine. It doesn't change mine. Again, it's smart. It just lets me rack up a bunch of Toxic, but this also gives me a great sack in my, um, my Lantern at this point as well. Not overly concerned at this point. And I just volt. It gives me momentum. If he wants to save this, then I'm fine. That's a weird shot. <laughs> that was a really weird shot. Um, DMC is going to be Big Latios. Unrecoverable damage. We get the volt switch off, which means we get a free switch in to our skinned race. So we're going to swap it in. I'll look at Cinderace. Oh, 50. Fly Blitz does kill. I want to see Rotom. Wash. I think I'm just going to click Fly Blitz. It does kill from this range. Like 100% kills from this range. And I know I'm faster. Um, and it gives me a lot of damage on any potential U-turn pivots. Because U-turn is what I've been clicking this entire game. And I want to claim a KO now. I want to claim a KO. If at all humanly possible. So, that's what we're going to click. And we'll see what we can do. So he's going to withdraw the Latios. It's fine. It's going to be Wash. Also fine. Uh, this thing will be to it KO'd. Or just Oko'd. Epic. <laughs> um, I clicked Flare Blitz there because I didn't want to miss on the Latios. Because that would have been, um, like, worst case scenario. Honestly, <laughs> like worst case scenario. So Cinderace is going to pick up our second kill of the game. And now our Celestia it looks like it walls everything. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Selly just like walls the entire team at this point. Um, So that's awesome. We will take it. Aromatisse can come in. I think I might just flare blitz that thing. Arom and I think it's offensive too, if it's Trick Room. At level 50, 
Pyro Ball does a lot. Flare Blitz also does a lot, and that's max defense. So I think I just stay in the Flare Blitz again. Yeah, that's old. How much? If it's oh yeah, yeah. Well, that thing packing with a little bit of chip we have. So big skin race is looking pretty good. If Ag Avalug comes in, I might just go hard Lantern. Because this Pokemon also just, like, claims a kill at this point. So I think I'm going to go Hard Lantern in an attempt to avoid taking any chip. And I can just offer Free Scald. I think that's my play. Body Press is going to come out. That probably will kill us, but that's okay. Yeah, that Avalog is a big boy. Okay. Sorry, my dogs are being absolute little demons. Um, So we're going to lose... Our first Pokemon, but I think that's fine. I just wanted to get my free cell of Steela. I'm gonna leech. And this thing can't really touch me. They go Latios, that's fine. It's gonna be this thing, also fine. I beat this thing 1v1 as we've established. I'm going to hit my Leech Seed, which is very important. I think we've pretty much well established that I beat this thing 1v1. And the moment I get that Spadef boost too, I'm uh, I'm vibing. <laughs> so we're going to Flamethrower. It's going to Body Press. That's fine. We're going to get a Spadef boost as well, which is great. Celesteela so is going to pick off this... Uh, Thing, and we're going to get the Spadef boost, which is honestly absolutely phenomenal. Plus one. Latios. At plus one. With a... Mystical Fire. Um, does legitimately no damage to us. <laughs> uh, so I think Celesteela can actually clean up this game at this point. I'm pretty sure, because it should be in range of a Heavy Slam as well. So we just click that. Um, I mean, I'm going to protect this first turn. Oh yeah, it's definitely in range of a Heavy Slam. I'm going to protect this turn, because why not? But I don't think I'm in a position to really lose this game. So Mystic Fire's going to pop. That's fine. We're going to get a little bit of lefties back, and Celesteela is going to pretty much clean up the game from here, I, su I think. Mystical Fire dropping our special tag is actually going to be pretty uh, pretty unfortunate. So special tag is going to drop. We are going to be able to knock out this Latios with a Heavy Slam. Plus two we go. Very nice. We still have the physical attack for the Aromatis, so again, not too big of a deal. Avalug. Let's see how much body press is doing to us. I'm going to leech. I'm going to leech that thing, for sure. Uh, we should be faster as well, even with our minus speed. Uh, we need this to actually 2 it KO Fizz Def Avalug, <laughs> which is pretty funny. Uh, we're going to leech. Uh, because we're minus one, we need this to two AKO Fist of Avalog. We would have before otherwise, but fine. So we're going to get lefties and leech back. Again, this is fine. I think we should be able to 1v1 this thing. If we do go down to it, it's fine. I'm pretty sure that our guy just wins in the back. Um, our skin race. But I'm going to protect. No reason not to. No reason not to. Um, and then we just flamethrower. And we should be in a pretty decent spot. So we're gonna protect. Get back lefties and that sweet, sweet lead seed recovery. Cover. I mean, that's fine. Again, I just I think I just click flamethrower here. And we should actually be able to KO it after lefties. Uh, if it's Fizz Def, and I'm pretty sure it is Fizz Def based on how goddamn much that that's doing. Um, 
and we live this next heavy slam. So we're gonna get back up to half, which is pretty insane. All right, I'm just gonna click flamethrower now. So flamethrower cops. That is definitely a two at KO. Cannot recover stall us. Body pressure's gonna pop. It's fine. And we're gonna get enough lefties to, you know, win this game. 100% of the time. I don't think there's a there's an out for my opponent at this point. So Sally's just going to do annoying silly things and be fat and annoying. I know this isn't the most entertaining way to win, especially um, for people who've watched my channel and see how much of an offensive approach I typically take with my draft stuff. Um, but in, in a league, I've said this a million times to other people, in a league that really restricted our budget, I felt as if drafting a really fat and annoying team would be more beneficial overall to me. Um trying to break through i mean trying to having teams trying to break through an annoying fat core with such li limited options as higher tier mods to really break through them um is is really tough and i think this uh this game was like 100 percent indicative of that i mean Sally just came in and sat on the field the whole game we're gonna heavy slam this should knock this thing out even if it's fist death it's in range uh so we're gonna get our third spin death boost and i'm pretty sure that's going to be the game I'm pretty sure that's going to be the game. Um, again, I hate calling it early because I feel like that can be a little bit disrespectful. But at this point, I don't think there's really an out for my opponent um, with the big lug in the back because I just click flamethrower. And if for some reason it lives and crits me with body press, I got Cinderace in the back to flare blitz and win the game. So should be the game. Should be the game. We are going to flamethrower. And I think that's going to be Selly picking up four really cementing itself as why it's one of the most broken mods in the format and why it's so insane that they gave me pick 17 Celestila. Pick 17 Celestila, guys. I just want to want to reiterate that. Pick 17 Celestila, and it does this, especially in, again, a league that gives such a limited budget. But GG's to my opponent. Um, I really do think that my matchup was super beneficial here. I don't think that he had a good matchup at all. Latios was very scary, and I think the Spectrum was very cool. And uh, if he predicted right, it was very tough for me to deal with. But uh, other than that, he just didn't have the pieces to really break through my fat. And um, it was kind of evident there and stuff like that. And we were able to use a good form of, uh, you know, momentum with the offensive lantern and the uh, the band of Cinderace. And we were able to position Selly to where everything that could have threatened it was gone. And basically the only thing that did threaten it on my opponent's team was going to be that Rotom. And the moment that thing went down, it was uh, pretty much curtains for him. But again, GG to my opponent. Definitely go check him in the description below. He seems like a very nice guy. And uh, yeah, drop a like if you haven't done so already. Sub if you are new. And I will see you guys in the next one. Later.